Hi guys, Dane here, and welcome to the June edition of Todd and Dane's Indie Read Along. So, I realise it's getting close to the end of the month. This actually might all be out in July, I don't know when you're watching this. But, um, and I haven't read any indie books this month, so I needed to fix that. Uh, I try and read at least one indie book a month with Todd the Librarian as part of our Indie Read Along, and we try and encourage other people to join in. So, if you want to join in, all you have to do is read, or try and read, one indie book a month. So this month I read The Children of Little Thwopping. This is edited by Ollie Jacobs, original book by Howard Williams, provided courtesy of the BPD. And that's kind of the gimmick here. So the author is Ollie Jacobs. I've talked about him on my channel before. Uh, he's my kind of go-to indie author. Although I think I've got all of his books now. Or I might be missing one, I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to read the blurb here. Thank you for purchasing this book. By doing so, you have financed the continued efforts of the Bureau of Paranormal Discoveries, BPD. Unless you have only picked it up or acquired it from a friend, in which case no thanks are given and the BPD would like to remind you of the needs of commerce in sustaining the efforts of unofficial government agencies. The year is 1952 and the town of Little Thwopping is prospering. The men folk are working hard, the women folk are keeping the homes in order, and literally nothing can go wrong. In fact, things go horrifyingly right when every woman in Little Thwopping falls pregnant. Sure, the resulting children are 15 feet tall with bone-crunching long limbs, scream in human roars, and shoot lasers from their eyes, but every child goes through teething problems. Written by Wilt Haven's resident author, Howard Williams, The Children of Little Thwopping is a fun tale that will leave you rolling on the floor and nodding with much thought. The BPD would like to clarify that this book is a piece of material found in conjunction with their investigation into P1983 and brought to publication with the help of Ollie Jacobs. So yeah, this book is kind of like a comedy sci-fi horror, almost a take on like uh, The Day of the Triffids, which I read last month uh, by John Wyndham. It definitely had those kind of vibes to it. And basically we've got this sort of 1950s Britain, but it's very much accentuated, so the misogyny is very much more present if that makes sense. I'm going to actually read you a few bits to kind of give you an idea for it. I should point out that Jacobs himself isn't a misogynist. I've seen reviewers making this mistake when I've seen them like review uh, like review other books but um, yeah basically it's kind of poking fun at this whole you know men as the breadwinners, uh, breadwinners women as the you know stay-at-home wives that, of the 1950s. Um, and what happens is, like I say, they all, all the women become pregnant, they all give birth to babies, and they all become these monsters. So uh, I'm going to read you a few little quotes just to give you a feel for the writing style. And I'm going to do the voice as well. So this is when his uh, wife's just told him that he's pregnant. Why, I nearly dropped my briefcase with joy, something I would rarely do. A man's briefcase was his primary weapon in the fight against communism, and I wasn't about to relinquish it for no Jerry St. Rusky, but a child to adorn our happy home. Why, that was such top news that I felt like romancing Beatrice on the very spot. Fortunately, my animal urges remained intact, and we instead shared a hearty handshake over the splendid news. I did notice there, actually, that says why I nearly dropped my briefcase was joy. So there are a few little typos in this, but not too many. So I'm going to read you this bit as well. This is the start of uh, Chapter 3, Babes Are Popping and Little Thwopping. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to the intricate layout of the female form. My expertise in the vaginal junction is solely restricted to the manly art of making love, leaving the medical nonsense to our local quack, Dr. Theodore Mandrake. That said, you can imagine my perplexion when only a mere month after our happy news of forthcoming babyhood, Beatrice swelled like a baboon. Sorry, like a balloon. Of course, there are no books on such matters, so we took this as a natural stage of gestation. True, it wasn't the way our ancestors did such things, but this was a modern world filled with modern advances. Why, I had often seen a black fellow walking the streets of Little Thwopping totally unhindered, so a sudden onset pregnancy was nothing out of the norm. I'm going to read you this quote as well from uh, when, when this chap went to visit the doctor. We knocked as firmly as we could before entering in a quick march. We didn't have an appointment, but such matters could wait at this juncture. We had to see Dr. Mandrake, and we had to see him now. Or in two to five minutes, as instructed by his appointment schedule. Apparently old Jenkins was having his annual colonoscopy, and the doctor was knuckle-deep in the septuagenarian's buttocks. As we took our seats to await our meeting with the good doctor, my rampant imagination took hold and forced me to consider the anal excavation that was ensuing inside. Before I could resist such thoughts, the true horror dawned on me and a cold sweat came upon my brow. 
A vile sickness brewed in my guttural region, as the image of the doctor's firm digits, glistening with jellied fluid, prepared themselves to enter the elasticated muscle of old Jenkins' cavity. The slow, painful entrance into this human orifice, making such horrible wet sounds as it did so, corrupting my very thoughts. The vision, oh, the horrific vision, of seeing Dr. Mandrake's arm lose itself within old Jenkins, playing him like a puppet as feces and crusted blood spilled from within. The twisted, serrated, crimson muscle tensing and contracting while doing so. Why these thoughts entered my brain, I did not know. Why they enter now, I am equally perplexed. All I knew was that I had to will them to stop before it became too much. Before the warped expression of orgasmic joy on old Jenkins' face burnt itself into my retinas and I was left with seeing Dr. Mandrake become one with him through his anal region. Yes, yes. Uh, anyway, I'm going to keep this uh, fairly short and sweet. It's, like I say, it's like a comedy, horror, end of the world sort of-ish novel. I did enjoy it. I gave it like a 3.75 out of 5. I appreciate it. it's probably not for everybody. So yeah, if that sounds like the kind of thing that you'd be interested in, be sure to check it out. Uh, indie authors always like the support. I have a few more indie books on my pile as well, and I've just ordered some more, so I'm excited about that. And soon I will be getting to Edward Lawn. So keep your eyes peeled. But in the meantime, as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments what indie books, if any, you've read this month. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.